fun is it something one considers in the balance of the universe, but this movie does put a frown on my face. <sighs> I can't believe I'm actually talking about this movie on my channel, and I mean making a rant video out of it. Hey guys, this is Frozen Things Steve is here, and welcome back to another video, and uh, welcome back to another um, rant on a Trolls movie, uh, leading up the Trolls back together. I know I didn't talk much about that in my the review, my rant on the first Trolls movie, but yeah, now I'm saying it that, that the whole reason why I'm running at a Trolls movie now, Trolls movies now is because I'm about to watch uh, Trolls Band Together online. Oh boy, I'm gonna be watching it tomorrow. But yeah, now it's time for me to do another biggest rant, uh, and this time around, I am going to be doing uh, the biggest rant. Probably even bigger than the than my rant in the first show. So yeah, I'm going to be doing a rant on Trolls World Tour. So Trolls World Tour uh, came out in the year uh, 2020, aka the worst year for movies. Uh, period. And this movie just uh, solidifies that. And it's uh, directed by Walt Dorn. Uh, thank uh, Mike Mitchell is no longer directing it. Thank God, because he deserved it better than, than to direct that first movie. And it stars uh, Anna Kendrick, Justin Timberlake, uh, Ron Funches, Rachel Bloom, James Corden, Kelly Clarkson, uh, Anderson Back, uh, Sam Rockwell, uh, Rockwell. Um, I'm missing someone. Jamie Dorman, uh, Anthony Ramos. Karan, Sony, uh, etc. And so basically, Charles World Tour tells the quote unquote story, if you can even call it a story, uh, tells the story of Poppy, uh, who is now, uh, he was now Queen of Trolls uh, Land and uh, Branch, uh, Branch, uh, who is now Poppy's best friend, uh, make uh, a, a, a surprising discovery that there are other trolls out there, there are other kinds of trolls who, uh, Pretty much have uh, distinct differences, uh, and yeah, they all have different tastes of music. Yeah, Poppy's uh, tribe is uh, basically pop, but then uh, there are other trolls who uh, sing different songs, and they literally are uh, separated because they have different tastes, and their different tastes uh, led them to clash, believing that they can never unite. But one day, uh, Thanos. Oh, sorry, I mean Queen Barb. Uh, Wants to um wants to er eradicate the uh, all uh, um Queen Barb wants to snap out half of the universe. Oh sorry, I mean wipe out all of music except for her, her own uh, band the rock. And so she does it by uh, taking all the Infinity Stones. Oh sorry, I mean uh, I mean the uh, Infinity Strings or or music strings. Yeah, I I'll call them Infinity Strings because that's what that's what this movie is. She takes out all the infinity strings from different genres of music, and, and she combines combines it, combines them into one to make uh, um, the world um, only care about the rock music and nothing else. And so Queen Poppy and her friends must uh, work together to stop uh, Queen Barb from uh, taking over Shoal uh, City. Yeah, isn't that a plot, yo? Yeah. I think y'all know by now how much I hate the first the first Trolls movie. Now the first Trolls movie is actually the most disliked uh, video on my channel. Yeah, I I can see I can see the the, the ratio on my uh, on, on my Trolls my biggest friend in the first Trolls. Uh, like it it's like fifty fifty. Um, it did get a lot of views, so thank God for that. The views is what I care about, but it did get a handful of dislikes. Uh, Thankfully, um, there was like 50-50 when it comes to the like and dislike. Uh, there were six likes and six dislikes, yeah. I'm sure you probably know who uh, disliked this movie. I'm very sure Luigi Marinus Gaming did, as, as well as uh, all a bunch of uh, Trolls fanboys slash opinion bashers, but whatnot. But yeah, Trolls Band Together is, no sorry, Trolls World Tour is something, yeah. For the reason like, I keep mistaking this, mistaking this with Trolls Band Together. 
But this is really called Trolls World Tour. Um, Trolls Band Together is tomorrow. But yeah, Trolls World Tour is something because this is Trolls World Tour fan 2001's favorite movie of all time. Yeah, yeah, this, this is his favorite movie of all time. He literally worships his movie. He, and he's like, oh, every movie needs to be like Trolls World Tour. So if, so yeah, if he writes in a bad movie like Across the Spider-Verse, he's just gonna be like, oh, you know, just show the boss Trolls World Tour instead. Why can't every movie be like Trolls World Tour? Yeah, he's like saying that, that yeah, which is just embarrassing. Uh, and yes, uh, I honestly never liked Trolls World Tour to begin with, not even when, uh, Trolls World Tour 5001, formerly called Inside 5001, a phrases movie. And he literally just won't stop talking about this movie. Yet, yeah, at some point, it became his favorite movie, and yet, yeah, um, even more than Inside Out. Inside Out was honestly one well more deserved to be his favorite movie than Trolls World Tour. I don't know what, why he's praising this one. Maybe it's because of how Dreamers is his favorite studio. But my thoughts on Trolls World Tour. Is, a, is the complete opposite of Trolls World Tour 5's opinions. While it is his favorite movie of all time, this is the worst movie of all time. Yeah, in fact, maybe I might be too harsh on the first from uh, after rewatching this uh, garbage. Now, yes, Trolls is still a part of my worst movies of all time, a high contender, and it is by far the worst movie of the previous decade. But after rewatching Trolls World Tour, all I gotta say is, Trolls World Tour is now officially the worst movie I have ever seen in my entire life. Period. Let's see if Trolls Band Together can top it, but right now, Trolls World Tour is just the worst. And also shout out to my good friend and YouTuber Aiden and Lena. He, he or she, I don't, I don't know what's the gender, but that you, the, Aiden and Lena agrees with me that the Trolls uh, that shows some um, uh, world tours is, is the worst movie in existence, and glad we both agree. Glad we're on, we're, we're both on the same page, uh, cause yeah, this movie is just garbage yeah, in every single way. Do I have any positives uh, with this movie? Nope, none, none at all, uh, none. Like, um, there is a uh, nothing good to say about this uh, movie. Um, there is nothing. Yeah, so let's, where do I even start with this, yeah? Let's just get straight into what actually makes this worse than the first film. Yeah, despite how bad the first Trolls movie was, at least I, I, I had my eyes uh, glued to the screen the whole time, like just trying to nitpick every single bad thing I, I can see in that film, which is, yeah, why I'd say Trolls is a little more tolerable, because at least I wasn't bored watching it. Uh, but maybe I was kind of bored, but at the same time, I was kind of enjoying uh, roasting that movie. Not a, it's not like it's an entertaining bad movie, just more of a... Just still like one of the worst movies in existence, but... But, you know, I have really strong things about it. I like the rage on it. But at least it is... But, yeah, Trolls World Tour is just... Uh, it's just uh, boring. Um... Yeah, it's just uh, boring. Uh, yeah, I was so bored out of my. I don't know what people like about this movie. Um, yeah, as as, as bad as the first show says, yeah, this is worse. Uh, I really cannot understand how uh, boring it is. Uh, and not to mention, it pretty much does this. It's just the same as the first film, just with a different plot and message. But when it comes to all the structure and stuff. It's just lazily executed, and, uh, and it's pretty much they're just uh, using the exact same formula as the first uh, as the first film. So, what is the point of that? Why is there even a troll sequel in the first place? I don't know. I mean, we could have gotten a sequel to better Dreamworks movies like Mega Mind Two, Rise of the Guardians Two, uh, but no, it's the Mega Mind and uh, Mega Mind and. And rest of the audience flop because the uh, people are just uh, idiots nowadays. They just take their kids to see trash like trolls. Yeah, and if Home gets a sequel, and although I do think, why well, do you think Home is uh, mediocre, average at best, and uh, nowhere near as bad as trolls? Uh, um, if Home gets a sequel, oh boy, yeah, then there is uh, something wrong with Dreamers. And Dreamers don't be there make a boss or anything. I mean, last I mean, Dreamworks is already on a roll with 2019 now. Uh, when, 
on the road in 2019 with How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, and Abominable. Two films I absolutely love, even though Abominable is kind of not perfect. The, it does have a pretty rushed out, uh, lazy, poorly executed villain and all that stuff, but... Um... Uh, yeah, um... But... At least Abominable was still amazing, and also very underappreciated. Like, I don't know who on earth would think that Shows World Tour is better than Abom Abominable. But, or even better than How to Train a Giant. Great for crying out loud. But, in 2020, DreamWorks reached the rock bottom. Dream like, this what is DreamWorks at their worst period. Um, the worst period. Uh, my god, the 2020 and 2021 was the death of DreamWorks era, as I'd like to call it. Because both years had sucked uh, for for DreamWorks. Like, all of our films sucked. Yes, even Cruise and New Age, which I used to actually used to like Cruise 2, but now I think Cruise 2 is a, it is a pretty bad movie, a horrible, a horrible movie, and probably one of... Probably the most overrated DreamWorks movie. I will most certainly rank the recruits to a new age at, at age at some point. It is better than Trolls World Tour, but it ain't saying much. And but, but 2021, 2021 was probably the worst year for DreamWorks. Cause um, but actually I say both 2020 and 2021 are both tied. 2021 had Spirit Untamed and Boss Baby 2, two films that I will certainly rant on uh, at some point. Maybe. I don't know, but yeah, at some point. But now, let's focus on what is possibly the worst of them all. The movie that really dragged the DreamWorks down, the uh, Trolls World Tour. Oh, well, yeah, thankfully, DreamWorks is able to uh, rise itself up uh, with 2022 with the bad guys and posting Moose's Last Wish. And I liked Ruby Gilman, despite the that movie getting hate, but Trolls Band again is coming, and then Global Band will, 4 will bring DreamWorks up. So, Jamrex is the definition of an inconsistent hit or miss studio where either they make gems or garbage. But I can't deny the fact that DreamWorks is responsible for making my least favorite movie of all time. Trolls and Trolls World Tour. Uh, oh my goodness. <sighs> yeah. 2020 is the worst year for movies. Hey, I mean, there's barely enough good movies, uh, despite some gems like uh, um, Tenet and Soul. Soul is, my, so, is still my, Tenet and Soul is even my favorite movie of, of 2020. I, I, it, it goes back and forth between Tenet and Soul, but there's some other great movies as well. Although most of them are, most of them are, are in the Oscars movies, like The Trial of Chicago, the Trial of Chicago 7, um, what else is there? Um, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, you know, all those Oscars movies, uh, yeah, that, that, those are like, what, what, what are in my top 10 uh, list, uh, but Trolls World Tour, out of all the movies in, in, in the worst year ever, Trolls World Tour is, it is no question the worst of them all, yes, this movie is worse than Artemis Fowl, yep, yep, this movie is even worse than Artemis Fowl, there I said it, yeah, and 2020 was responsible for my least favorite Disney movie. And yes, my Artemis Fall biggest friend is coming sooner than you think. Now, if you're gonna ask me, what about Cuties is Trolls World Tour? Do I think Trolls World Tour is worse than Cuties? Honestly, I think Cuties is objectively worse, uh, but Cuties uh, is a film that I uh, would deny its existence. Uh, Cuties uh, doesn't exist in my mind. I, I Saw cuties, but then I, uh, I'll, in, in my heart I saw cuties, but in, in my, no, wait, in my gut I saw cuties, but in my heart I did not see it at all, because I don't know what I was watching. I was just watching something that like that felt like a fever dream. Cuties felt more like a fever dream than a movie. At least Joel's World Tour felt like a real movie, so it's enough for me to just uh, slam this movie with a hammer, and just talk about everything that is wrong with this movie. So yeah, let's uh, um, do this. Uh, yeah, first of all, the story in this movie is so cliché. This is the definition of of a cliché. The um, cliché. This this whole time I had this straight up bored face with my eyes literally rolling 
the whole time, and never was I was I smiling through it. I was just pissed off uh, uh, what I was seeing. Uh, what I was seeing. Um, like, it's yeah. I, I think we can all, most of us can agree that this is basically Infinity War for toddlers. Yeah. If toddlers can't watch Infinity War, I mean, they literally have Infinity War, yeah. Even if I think this meme is, particular meme is overrated, I'm gonna like say it anyway. Mom, can we have Infinity War at home? We have Infinity... Uh, no, it's question. Mom, can we watch Avengers Infinity War? We have Avengers Infinity War at home. At home. Avengers Infinity War at home, aka Trolls World Tour, yeah. I think that meme is overrated, but I, I just did it once, because... Uh, yeah, I think it, that pretty much sums up uh, this movie. Yes, yeah, it's, it's so obvious. It's basically Infinity War, yeah. Um, the only difference is that uh, Barb is just a straight-up villain who doesn't uh, see, her, see herself as a hero, unlike Thanos, which makes Queen Barb so uncom un uncompelling. And I'll, I'll talk more about Queen Barb later. Um, yeah, literally just this premise of Queen Barb uh, taking, like, trying to steal all six strings, uh, like like as in their infinity stones to uh ha to use them to destroy the world and you literally got the uh, how to put them in one weapon and then use it to destroy everything. Ugh, that is like you don't tell me that is an infinity war. It is yeah, and infinity war is a masterpiece. It's my favorite Avengers movie. Although Secret Wars is probably gonna top it. Uh, but my God, yeah, Trolls World Tour. If you see the Trolls World Tour is better than Infinity War. I'm not gonna attack anyone for that, but please explain to me why. Just explain to me. And yes, just like the first Trolls movie, this is once again another baby movie. Another movie that, that is only made for nothing but babysitting. Uh, babysitting. Um, ugh. Yeah, and, and I'm sh I don't even think kids will enjoy this. I don't even see babies enjoy this. They get bored out of their mind because there's literally nothing funny here. Like, there is no comedy. Like, I'm sure there was some comedy, but I I mean, was that even funny? Was that supposed to be a joke yet? There is never a scene in, 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 a, in this film where I would just be like, hey, that was at least a, a, an attempt of making a joke. Because there was literally no attempt at all. And, oh my goodness, the message of the movie. The, the freaking message. Oh, uh, yeah, just like the first film, once again, this movie literally um, is so preachy with its message, it just hammers it down into our throats like no one cares. It literally just tells us right in front of our faces, non-stop on what the message is. It literally breaks the show, don't tell you. And what's worse, this mes message has been done a million times in better movies, so why is that message of Trolls World Tour, you may ask? That we're all different, and even, and even if we're all different, we can still live in unity and be friends despite being different. In other words, being different is okay. Um, and don't have prejudice against uh, the others. Now, where did I hear that, uh, that message before? I can't think of a lot of movies, because I, I, I just don't, I just feel kind of brainy right now. I can't really think of a lot. But one movie that actually uses it, that message, um, that message, Zootopia. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually going to be reviewing Zootopia in November, so stay tuned for that. But Zootopia it is a movie with the same message, uh, a message about harmony and unity and, uh, and being different is, is, is okay, you know, with, you know, Prey and Predator, um, you know, being different, that's, um, you know, it, it, and yeah, this movie does share a lot of similarities to Zoto to Zootopia, like how uh, Prey and Predator were like you know um, they hate each other because of how uh, different they were, how um, diff how different they were as species. But then um, the the message that at the end is uh, that Prey and Predator can unite and live as live as one uh, to live as one despite being different. Yeah, that's basically Charles Bronson, but. At least with Zootopia, it was told in such a powerful way, and I do think, and I do think I said this a few times already. Uh, that, but I think Zootopia has the best message uh, that Disney has ever put out, and it's true because Zootopia um told this message in such a unique, uh, 
in such a clever way and a way that actually means something not and it doesn't feel forced chose where to on the other hand it feels so forced uh, like you don't need to like go that far and this movie is so political like would kids want to see a uh, political movies with political agendas i'm not trying to even no, I'm not trying to be anti SJW, but yeah, um, yeah, and yeah, literally, this movie is political, an unnecessary, uh, political, um, uh, p- political, yeah, um, you know, uh, basically, um, uh, Queen Barb's motivation is uh, taking uh, power against all unity, uh, isn't that political to you? I mean, I have nothing against political messages, um, like, I love Zootopia for being political. Uh, that's one of the reasons as to why I love Zootopia. Because of its politics. But Joe's World Tour, uh, it's just forced politics. It, it, it just it just comes up by just thinking it's Mars, but actually it's not. It's just a uh, dumb uh, brainless entertainment for kids to just uh, to just uh, make their brain and have the same size as Patrick from SpongeBob. Yeah, that's that's why it is and the politics is so the politics uh like did not need to be there. It, 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 if it, if what it does, it it just make makes uh kids uh dumb, and people complain about Ryan the Last Dragon's message, and Ryan the Last and the Last Dragon uh that's why coming out the uh, after Trolls World Tour is another movie that uh, talks about mess, that talks about you know uh unity and all that stuff and a lot of political messages uh and getting along despite differences uh but. Yeah, people complain about Ryan the Last Dragon's message of being preachy, but no, it's not preachy. I I, I did not think uh, Ryan's message was preachy. I didn't find it preachy at all. Uh, Chose World Tour is pretty much everything people complain uh, about Ryan the Last Dragon's message. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, sure, yes. Uh, the message, um, sure, um, the, the message in this movie is very important. I think p- kids need to, and, and everyone needs to learn that being different is what makes us unique and special, but Trolls World Tour is the wrong movie to get that message from because it, because it, of how poorly executed it is. And besides the message, everything else in this movie, uh, like literally no character grows, has any character growth whatsoever. They, like, they kind of grow in the movie, but they literally, not, not in the way, uh, where the first when the first shows end, uh, you know the shows literally grew. Uh, well, was there any was there even any character growth? Well, for Branch specifically, oh yeah, let's talk about Branch in this movie because um, I got something to say. Yeah, remember in the, in, in the first movie, it, it was implied that Branch uh, is is gray because he's all grumpy and doesn't want to be happy, and then he turns blue when he's actually happy. Well, guess what? In this movie, he's literally back to gray. Are you serious, movie? I mean, despite I, I, I hate the, the first Trolls movie with a brain passion, and I stand by my opinion on it, I think that, you know, um, Branch uh, being gray in this, instead of blue just literally goes against the odds of uh, the first movie. It just goes against the whole point of Branch's character. And, uh, and Branch's character, and, and, and once again, Branch is, Branch is basically this uh, smart Alec who's just like, oh, I'm smarter than you, you need to do what I say. And Poppy in this movie is even more unlikable than, uh, than the, the first, uh, than, than, than the first movie, because Poppy is literally, um, you guys know, um, Poppy is uh, literally just uh, even more unlikable, like, Remember the first one where when, when Poppy starts out about as selfish and inconsiderate and, and wouldn't care about anyone's feelings, and now she must learn to actually care about others' feelings. Well, Poppy literally goes through the same character arc in this movie. Yeah, she doesn't uh, grow as a character. She literally starts from where um the film left off. She starts from ground zero. Um, yeah, the only character growth Poppy has is one being the fact that she's queen which is uh, basically the end of the first shows so we all know that by now and secondly and uh, secondly um poppy redeems uh queen barb uh, and and, tell, and tries to once again preach the message to all the society and they'll like listen that's it but poppy just comes off as very unlikable selfish and 
still my least favorite character ever. Oh my god, I Poppy is just so inconsiderate. Um, so inconsiderate. Uh, like she, she, I mean, she's like she's so arrogant and cocky in this movie. She's like, oh, I'm the queen. I should give all the decisions. And and she's like, no, you should listen. So you should uh, listen to others. Uh, um, you should uh, listen to others and. But yeah, Queen Poppy is just being selfish and careless. And not to mention, Queen Poppy is once again in that, oh, everything is all sunshine and, and rainbows. Uh, like, like on that stage. Oh, like, oh, like what? Did the writers even watch the first movie? Like, you, you're literally just trying to start everyone's character arts from ground zero. Uh, from ground zero. Uh, Poppy already understands that not the world isn't rainbows and sunshine, but why not King Peppy, um, Poppy's father? And by the way, what kind of a name is Peppy? That that is the most ridiculous name. Ever. When Peppy uh remind warns Poppy about the uh, branch being evil, uh, Poppy is like, oh no way, Queen Barb isn't evil. He's uh, Queen Barb isn't evil. Uh, Queen Barb is 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 a nice guy. I mean, there are no evil pe evil troll in this world, cause the the world is all sunshine and rainbows. Oh my goodness, I, I mean, this, it just makes me just cringe so hard. The cringe so hard. Ugh. Um, and uh, as for my thoughts on, on Queen Barb, as for my thoughts on, on, on Queen Barb, I would say that Queen Barb is the quote unquote best uh, Trolls villain. I mean, maybe because of the fact that it actually kind of feels a little, it feels a little more natural that. Uh, that the villain of the movie is actually a troll, not some ridiculous looking creature like uh, the Bergens in, in, in the first movie, and also a bunch of, and also a robot sim, and also a bunch of robots in, in Trolls Band Together. Apparently, the villain's a bunch of robots uh, who, um, yeah, at least the villain, the villain in this one is a little more natural. But, and Queen Barb is probably the most tolerable character. Uh, in the in, in the movie, but yeah, she's just a Thanos ripoff. What just without any other compelling uh, things that make Thanos such, such an amazing villain. Barbie and and Barbie's just an annoying. She's like, oh, I hate all music. Yeah, her motivation is so dumb. Basically, the reason as to why uh Barbie is not doing all this is because she hates the other music, the other music, and, and uh, she wants to uh, get rid of them because she thinks so. so Everything should be about rock. That is dumb. I mean, at least like with Thanos, um, why can't he be like making like Thanos? Like, why can't Barb actually do this to, to to get the better of the universe? Yeah, that's how I would fix Barb. At least give a better reason. At least a, a reason that can actually feel heroic and, and have Barb uh, view herself as a hero. Um, that she's she's trying to steal the strings uh, to uh to um better the universe. Uh, not just the, not just because she hates uh, any other music, and then she'll just be like, she'll just uh, just straight up trash everyone like, oh your music sucks, oh your, oh that sucks, oh that sucks, uh, 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 yeah, oh my goodness, and and yeah, Barb, and as for the other characters, yeah, they all suck. Uh, yeah, apparently Cooper um has this uh subplot where he's, where he literally uh, finds his own tribe, but uh, he really tried to find his own tribe and, and he finds his own siblings. Uh, that kind of feels like thinking about it. That's actually kind of a setup to what we're about to get uh, in Trolls Band Together with the whole uh, long lost siblings plot. I I even forgot that the uh, that that there's that subplot of of Cooper um. Of you know, Cooper, I'm um, finding his own uh, family. Um, and my God, it's just forced. Like, why? Why not do that in, in Trolls Band Together? Since Trolls Band Together is all about uh, finding your normal sibling. Why uh, didn't you just do that in, in the in the uh, in in the third film? And while Cooper is technically the the true hero of the movie, if, if you think about it, yeah, he still he still sucks. As he's he's such a useless character. Um. Biggie's a little more useful in this one than uh, the first shows, but it results in him to be to be even more annoying and insufferable. It just shows uh, how awful of an actor uh, James Gordon is. Ugh, like 
James Gordon freaking sucks. I mean, just at least do. I'm not gonna like and attack James Gordon or anything. I know he, he seems like a nice guy. I mean, I actually like James Gordon's uh, carpool videos. Yeah, I will say that. And James James Gordon's uh, late night shows. Uh, I enjoy them. Yeah, sure. He's no Jimmy Kimmel. And yes, guys, I I defend Jimmy Kimmel. Don't care what anyone says. Uh, um, but James Gordon is kind of enjoyable. Like like. It, 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 I saw this video where where James Corden was lit, was literally singing uh, alongside the the, the Stranger Things cast. I forgot the name of the song, but it was a classic song. He was singing with with the Stranger Things cast, uh, particularly um, Finn Wolfhard, Kayla McLaughlin, um, the actor's name of Dustin. I forgot his name. I'm, I don't know why. Uh, Dustin Sapter and Noah Schnapp. Uh, oh yeah, Gaten Maturano. Yeah, that's Dustin. So, yeah. Yeah, I saw the video with James Corden singing with them, and that was, and that was actually very good. So, so yeah, James Corden just, so yeah, James Corden just stick with those things, you know, late night shows and you know, all that stuff. Not, but acting, especially voice acting, nah. I mean, and, and, and you know it's bad when he's literally in both the Trolls uh, franchise and the yeah, Moji movie. Ugh. Yeah, what? Yeah, that says something. That says something. Um, what else is there to say? Oh yeah, the new characters. Like besides the, like they're all uh, pointless. You know, Delta Dawn, uh, um, Hickory, uh, King. Like you know, all those are uh, different. The ones, uh, all those are different ones. Um, yeah, they're all useless. And although I'm not, I'm personally not not a fan of K-pop. I think K-pop is overrated. Honestly, I absolutely hated what they did to K-pop. Yeah, K- K-pop fans would certainly be outraged uh, towards uh, what they did to K-pop. Uh, with uh, what they did to to K-pop, uh, yeah. Um, the, the K-pop. Yeah, because this movie literally spits in the face to K-pop by. Just putting them in this movie, trying to sing a bunch of cringe songs, and just the uh, K- the K-pop would be like, "Oh, what have you done?" In fact, in my Lairbox, in my recent Lairbox review of uh, the first Trolls movie, uh, there was I, I received a comment from a K-pop fan uh, saying that uh, she uh, I think I I it was her. She said that uh, she was literally insulted by uh, what they did to to K-pop in uh, K-pop music in Trolls World Tour. Yeah. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. And and yes, oh yeah, I do remember the the jokes now in this movie. And any, I only remember like a few jokes now. Like think on reflection, like as I'm going through this review, I started to pick up some of them. But the moment there are jokes in this movie, the moment that jokes come out, this is the death of comedy. Yeah, this is the death. Of comedy, every all the jokes that I remember are some of the, the dumbest jokes I have ever seen. Like, um, for example, um, you know, there's a scene where the uh, hacker is like, "Do you want cappuccino?" and the uh, Fabio is like, "Cappuccino, yes." Oh, uh, what? Like that is literally a joke that I can even come up with. You know, but I forgot, but not cappuccino specifically, but. Yeah, that joke is like literally something a five-year-old kid can think of. But like that joke right there just made me cringe more than that. It just made me even more angry than than it, it made me mad than than the, than the, even a single attempt to laugh. That was not an attempt at a joke. That was just a pun that isn't really a pun. But the worst scene in the film has to be the scene now. Uh, Basically, the scene when uh, Poppy, uh, Branch, and Biggie were like in this sub uh, country, in this sub uh, country place, and, and they, they seem like you know all the uh, country trolls were like singing it so uh, depressing, um, so uh, de- depressing, and they're like, oh, and and then and then you see those tears coming up. And then Poppy's like, oh, music is not supposed to be sad. Music is supposed to be happy. And then they, they start singing some of the most annoying songs. They, they, then they start singing a bunch of uh, garbage songs into one. Well, there are some songs that I like that were put in this one, like uh, Party Rockets in the House. And, 
I like that song. But you know what songs are important? Like, uh, you know, tell me what you want, what you really, really want, tell me what you want, what you want, what Like, and, what well, I'm gonna start, and, who uh, will not go home, so, woof, woof. Yeah, those songs suck. Yeah, um, and, but, and, and even though I like Party Rock, yeah, they, they definitely make a horrible rendition of that song. And, oh my god, that song just infuriates me. I, I literally fast forwarded from that scene the moment I saw it, because, yeah, even even now when I saw Trolls World Tour for the first time, I knew that was the worst scene in the film. I knew that was my least favorite scene. And oh my goodness, that scene was... Uh. And speaking of songs, yeah, the songs in this movie are just as horrible as the first film. Thankfully, there isn't a song that, that, isn't as, that is nearly as bad as... I would say that the, the first movie had worse songs, you know, like... Uh, Get back up again, and uh, especially can't stop that feeling. Yeah, I take any Trolls World Tour songs any day over can't stop the feeling. Uh, but the songs in this movie are just um, are just uh like, you know um with the old oh, trolls just wanna have fun. Yeah, girls just wanna have fun. That is a classic song, and and this and this. This movie just ruined it. Oh, uh, Charles just went on. And also, and by the way, even Barbie ma ma made a better um, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun parody, you know, with, yes, I, I saw this um, clip on YouTube, uh, with the, posted on YouTube with, well, from, from the IMAX uh, screening of Barbie when they uh, re-released it, um, and they included the deleted scenes, and one of the scenes what they included was Ken, was Ken singing uh, Boys Just Wanna Have Fun. Oh boy, just wanna have fun. Oh boy, just wanna have fun. Yeah. That is actually pretty awesome and way better than Trolls just want to have fun. Uh, and I already mentioned that the, the cringy song uh, in the uh, the cringy song that pop those cringy pop songs that uh, Poppy um, Branch and Biggie sings uh, and all that stuff. Um, um, what other songs were there? I just can't remember most of the songs. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's the best I would describe the songs. They are forgettable. Oh yeah. Also, another uh, joke that I would con that consider among the death of comedy is basically when Biggie and, and, and some of the shows were in, um, snuck into um, um, Barb's or Rock area, literally disguising themselves as uh, disguising themselves as uh, rock shows like, and then they're like, oh, we're rock shows like in such a sarcastic way, and then. And then the stage guy was like, oh, show me what you got. And then they literally do fake rock with imaginary instruments. And they're all like singing or pretending to sing a rock song. And then the, the uh, guard, was, the, the, the stage guy was, the stage was like convinced. And then they're like, okay, you can go. Are you serious? Realistically, they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't get thrown out. Uh, even if they tried to pretend to be rock like that. My God, my God, can't this movie get any stupider than that? Serious one, and the climax of the film is completely anticlimactic. I just couldn't care less about the climax. Uh, the the climax uh, is just uh, yeah um like um um Queen Barb but literally turns uh shows into rock zombies, which completely came out of nowhere and uh, yada 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 yeah. Who cares about that? And. And Poppy literally like destroys uh, the the, infi the infinity strings, and now, yeah, and now it'll it'll turn to silence. Yeah, and yes, Poppy was the villain of the movie for doing that. Shame on you, Poppy, for destroying all music. But you know, but then they sang uh, this probably my least favorite song in the film. Uh, yes, that song. I know that's Shows World Tour fans 2001's favorite song. I wish I called this the worst song, but it's not because it's still better than Can't Stop the Feeling. But my God, that song is is annoying. And also, that's that scene was supposed to be emotional, um, but just like just like with the um, True Color scene from the first Shows movie, this one just came off as just emotionally manipulative. Just trying to force the uh, audience um, emotions into. Um, Force audiences and emotions into uh, one, 
like force audience emotion, but it just doesn't work because because it's just uh, there's no an impact to it. So it's just like okay, it's a boring song. That song was just uh, okay. And at the end of the film, Livy once again. Poppy summarizes uh, the, the message, even though we get Poppy summarizes that oh, oh, we know, but, but the message is it's about the unity is okay to be different, blah blah blah. And I was like, okay, we, we get it already, that's that message. Oh, oh my god, thank god this movie And then from there. Thank god it's short, it's slightly short in the first film. Oh my god, this movie just makes me want to go there. This movie, um, just. Oh my god, I can't believe we live in a world where we get movies like this, yeah. Trolls World Tour is the worst movie I have ever seen in my entire life. It is just an abortion, it is everything wrong with film. It came out in the worst time for a film and literally ended up, end up being uh, one of the worst things of in 2020, next to COVID. Yeah. Now, may yes, maybe um, COVID and the delayed movies are worse, uh, COVID is worse, you, you can't say a movie that's worse than COVID, but besides anything else but COVID, Trolls World Tour is uh, worse. Uh, Trolls World Tour is the worst thing in 2020. Um, yes, even, yeah. Um, I, I better participate in, in the Black Lives Matter protest than ever watch this movie again. Uh, I, I'd rather have the police step on me like what they did with George Floyd than, than ever watch this movie again. So yeah. With that said, I'm gonna, you all know what I'm going to give Trolls World Tour. Zero stars out of five. Worst movie ever. Woo! Man. Man, that was one epic rant, wasn't it? So yeah, that's all for my biggest rant on Trolls World Tour. What are your thoughts on Trolls World Tour? Do you actually enjoy this movie? Or do you agree with me that this is the worst movie ever made, or at the very least, the worst animated movie of 2020. Yeah, this movie makes Scoop look like a masterpiece in comparison. So yeah, um, comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for uh, my biggest rant on Trolls Banded Together. Oh boy, the day has gone. Oh yeah, but actually before that, I'm going to be doing my trade reaction for Madame Web first, uh, before uh, watching, uh, be 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 before my shows band together, uh, biggest rant. So yeah, bye guys.